Visual Studio Code is one of the most popular and loved IDs by developers. And it's understandable. It's an excellent and complex IDE that has everything you need. I enjoy it and I've been using it since the beginning of my career. So, I have nothing wrong to say about it. However, I came across another IDE that made me switch instantly. It's been my primary editor for a while and I couldn't be happier. And a spoiler alert, this IDE is more or less VS Code. Yes, you heard that right. But before showing you the product, let's briefly talk about AI. The recent boom of AI has resulted in many products that use AI in one form or another. It feels like a dozen AI products are released weekly. From my experience, most of those products are mostly hype and not very useful. But if you are patient enough to sift through all these products, you might find a gem that's actually a great product. And that's the case with the new code editor that I'll show you in this video. But why switch code editors? Why not use Visual Studio Code with an AI tool like ChatGPT? ChatGPT is already super popular and used by almost all developers, more or less, and in one form or another. The two most common ways developers use ChatGPT are to generate code from new prompts or ask questions based on a piece of code. But this combo, VS Code plus ChatGPT, has a couple of issues. On a usual day, the above use cases can result in a lot of back and forth between the code editor and ChatGPT. But that's the list of the worries. My main issues with ChatGPT are that it doesn't have context about your code base and it can't reference files from your code base. And until recently, it couldn't even reference documentation websites. It's pretty limited in this regard, but it's understandable, since ChatGPT and similar tools are general purpose and are not geared towards coding. However, that didn't make it less frustrating. So what's the solution then? The solution is the AI VS Code. I remember someone suggesting I try a new IDE with AI capabilities. I was initially skeptical because I don't believe in the hype behind most products. Even more, it has paid plans which turn me off. But more on that later. But then I thought of giving it a try. What do I have to lose? And that's how I started using Cursor. Cursor is a VS Code fork and claims to be the first AI code editor. It's VS Code with AI capabilities. Since I'm a big fan of the normal VS Code, I was sold out immediately. Cursor allows you to chat with your code, which is nothing new, but it has context about your code base and you can ask anything about it. When answering your questions, this code editor takes your existing code into consideration. Moreover, you can reference files and docs when asking questions. This is useful because you can help the AI get more context when answering your questions. This ID also enables you to generate and refactor code easier and faster. All you have to do is to select a code block and press either command L to start the AI chat with the selected code or command K to do it in line. But one of my favorite and most used features is the debugging feature. When you encounter a bug, you can click the auto debug button, which looks through your files and tries to fix the problem. Moreover, fixing lint errors is now a breeze. Instead of reading a TypeScript error with a zillion lines, you can ask Cursor to explain and fix it. From my experience, it manages to fix the issues in 95% of the cases. I'm so thankful for this feature alone. So, these three features are the main reasons that made me switch to Cursor. I feel more productive since I switched to Cursor because it allows me to utilize AI to its full capabilities right into my code editor. I don't need to use other external tools and pay the price of context switching. Moreover, the usage of other AI tools except Copilot has gone down drastically. I barely use ChatGPT and others since I started using Cursor. But this tool also has drawbacks. The biggest drawback for me is that it's a paid product. Usually, I don't mind paying for products I find valuable. But considering it's a fork of VS Code, which is open source and free, it feels weird. But maybe that's just me. Thankfully, there is a free tire. 
And even better, you can use your own API key, which is what I'm doing. Though it's important to mention that you can pay more when using your open API key, especially if you use the AI features heavily. There were months when I paid between 30 and 40 dollars. However, most of the time I paid less than 20 dollars. On average, my bill was the same or less as subscribing to the paid cursor plan. Another drawback for some people could be that cursor stores the code on their servers or logs. Once again, there is an alternative if you want to avoid that, thankfully. You can opt out from them collecting data about you and your code. All you have to do is to turn on the privacy mode in the editor. They claim they won't store your code if you enable the privacy mode. That said, these are the only two drawbacks and the only things that bug me until now. Other than that, I'm more than happy with this code editor. It managed to take the best of two worlds, one of the best code editors, VS Code and AI and mesh them together. So I really enjoy using this code editor. If you've used Cursor and found other drawbacks, feel free to share them in the comments below. And before closing off, I want to mention that they didn't sponsor this post and I have no affiliation with them at the time of recording this video. I simply enjoyed the product and wanted to share it with others. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.